What's up guys, today we have Harry on the show. He's a really good leg locker and he's a purple belt even though he's wearing a blue belt rash guard. This is a saddle entry I learned from watching John Callistine who's a really good Hensel Gracie black belt. The saddle has many different names, insights in Gaku, inside Ashi, 411, honey hole. It's the most dominant position to hit leg locks from because your legs are hidden and you're in a prime position for an inside heel hook. The most powerful and damaging of all leg locks. Switching my arm from the inside to the outside of Harry's leg gives me the ability to invert. Now I shoot my outside leg through Harry's legs and bring my inside leg behind and lock up the figure four. What I would do from here, if it was me in the saddle, is grip fight to control my opponent's wrist so my opponent can't lock up the heel hook. Harry goes to a belly down position with his hips in the air, which is a great defense and makes it hard for me to get the angle for the breaking pressure. As I turn Harry's hips towards the camera, I get the angle I need to finish, but it'd be much better if I had Harry's hips still on the ground. Finishing a heel hook is all about engaging your hips like an arm bar or a knee bar. I like to think of heel hooks as basically a knee bar but to the side of the knee. I should have done a better job of stopping Harry from being able to elevate his hips and rotating. Now he pushes on my butt with his foot to clear the knee line. One of the easiest ways to get out of a leg lock. Not taking anything away from Harry is also some great defense but if it were a tournament I definitely would have went harder on that and maybe the outcome would have been different. Maybe not though. As I leg drag Harry, rather than accepting the pass he tries to turtle but before he gets to a solid defensive turtle I put in my over under grips and hooks. If you're well connected to someone where you move they will move. The wrist ride I have with my right arm makes it even easier to drag him down where it'll be easier to go for submissions. Harry is very hard to choke as he's really good at hand fighting and not letting his arms get trapped by your hooks. So so instead of going for regular back control, I go to a higher position, more suited for arm bars and triangles. My left heel is stopping Harry from turning into me, so I switch to leg control to stop him from turning into me, so I can get a better position with my legs to finish the arm bar. I have Harry's other hand controlled so he can't grip his hands together and I'm taking my time so I don't lose the arm. But look what happens. I do lose the arm, but I get it right back so all good. The reason I go for wrist control with the inside of my elbow is that I want to keep his arm close to my chest so there's no room for it to come out again. But now as I do go to finish, wrist control with two hands is going to be the best way to prevent Harry from hitchhiker escaping. If you'd like to support the channel, please join my Patreon. At the end of every month we have an Ask Me Anything slash interactive online seminar. This month we'll be attacking the back. You can pay as little as 5 bucks a month or loonies as we call them in Canada. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you are subscribed, let me know how long you've been subscribed for and what video was the first one you've seen. I'm trying to start on my guard more, that way you guys can see more of my guard. Harry tries to step around for a leg lock, but clips me right in the head with his heel. Accidents happen though, it's a combat sport, I'm just really glad it didn't split me open as I cut really easy and have enough scars as it is. Harry tries to put me in the saddle and my priority is just keeping my knee out of there. There's a small risk of the calf slicer right now, but minimal. I check my head to see if I'm bleeding, but I'm all good. Left a little goose egg though. Normally this would be a battle of who can come up first, but Harry usually only has one objective, attack the legs, so he doesn't mind being on the bottom. From here I attempt a Toriano pass, but as I do, Harry puts in his top knee like a knee shield. This puts me in the perfect position for an arm weave pass because I can place my hand between Harry's legs and keep both knees pointed in the same direction. Why pass to side control when you can pass to mount, right? That's why I insert my knee for dope mount. Harry has specialized in leg locks since he was a white belt, and I've seen him tap black belt with leg locks as a blue belt, yet I'm still comfortable executing dope mount on him. More proof dope mount is safe against leg locks if done right. Make sure to check out my dope mount guide to learn more about dope mount in depth. I'm doing everything I can to separate Harry's elbows from his body so I can come up to a higher mount where it'll be easier to go for submissions. Harry is doing a really good job of not letting that happen. Harry's both very good and very strong. Harry adjusts his strategy and starts trying to bring his foot in front of my hips for an escape or leg lock attempt, which is a legit move if you have the flexibility, but you also risk your opponent coming up to a higher mount. Harry pulls it off successfully and my priority is hiding my back as it's initially left exposed and vulnerable to a back take. I try to counter Harry's escape by coming up as high as possible, which makes it both harder to get his feet in front of my hips and makes it easier for me to go for an arm bar. This is pretty funny, it reminds me of a zombie poking their hand through the dirt of their grave. It's super effective too, Harry uses his hand to help put his foot on my armpit, which is an excellent place to push someone away with. As I lose position, I immediately Gramby roll, that way I can hide my back by putting it on the mat. I frame with my hand to keep Harry away and shrimp out to make more space. I can tell Harry wants to do something with my left leg since he has a grip on it, so I hide it by putting it on the inside of his. This leads to a really cool scramble as I try to take Harry's back and is the highlight of the video in my opinion. I love scrambles like these. We go round and around and around as I progressively gain better position on his back, trying to align 
align my hips with his. I push on Harry's armpit to make his legs lighter and easier to manipulate. I'm basically doing the same mechanics as a rolling back attack, but from the bottom. The grip I have with my right arm isn't as good for upper body control as a seatbelt grip, so Harry's more easily able to roll away. This adjustment I do with my hips in the air is what really secures the back take, as well as establishing a seatbelt grip, with one arm over Harry's shoulder and one arm under his armpit. Harry could still possibly attempt to roll, as I don't have my left hook in yet, but it would likely be a losing battle considering how positionally secure I now am. Harry is staying very defensively secure, keeping his elbows and knees close, but I do manage to find some space to put my last hook in. I try to bring Harry to the ground right here by lifting with my right leg, but I'm unsuccessful. So instead, I flatten Harry out by driving my hips into him and try to secure a rear naked choke. But it's actually hard to get under the neck from here. This position is better suited for MMA, where you can deliver some nasty ground and pound. Hard to see from this angle, but I snatch up the gift wrap as Harry's hand was left up high from defending his neck when I had his back. I take the gift wrap anytime I can get it because it's great for attacking the back, for going for arm bars, and just great for control in general. Harry senses the arm bar or triangle coming and gives up his back to prevent either attack. Harry's not keeping his elbows as close to his body as he should in turtle, and I start thinking about going for the Ronda Rousey arm bar. Anytime you're belly down on someone's back and see their arms aren't super tight, you should go for this. Also, a reminder to keep your arms tight if you're on the bottom. For this arm bar, it's really important to put your shin over their head rather than your leg in front of their face. The shin over the head will cause a rotation of your opponent and the leg in front of the face could be grabbed and used as an escape. The shin is much better. It's really important I grab Harry's leg so he can't turn into me as I don't have the best leg positioning for the armbar right now. I'd much prefer to have my right leg under Harry's left armpit rather than in front of his face but it kind of just ended up there. Now I just work to break the grips Harry has with his hands while trying not to lose the arm and trying to hide my head so Harry can't do anything to it with his legs. Either Harry's hands slip or he has a plan that went wrong but I'm able to take advantage of it and extend his arm. Now I actually use my right leg being at a perfect position to my advantage and use it as a frame to stop Harry from being able to turn up into me. Alright guys thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you did please leave a comment or fist bump. I really appreciate it.